Let me teach you how to make one of these. What's going on? I'm Dylan from Saturday Morning Props, where I teach how I do all my 3D printed props and cosplays and things like that. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make your own Nimbus 2000. It's actually kind of hard to get this whole thing in the shot because it's so big. It's actually life size and it's wonderful. Let me know in the comments down below what would be your dream prop from Harry Potter. I wish I could say this video was sponsored by some cool brand or something, but unfortunately we're not there yet. But this video is sponsored by people like you. Thank you to all my Patreon members over on patreon.com slash Saturday Morning Props. I really appreciate the support. It's absolutely fantastic and I can't believe that you guys allow me to do stuff like this and make Nimbus 2000s. Love you guys. It means so much to me. All right, let's talk about this prop. The file for this is by Mystery Makers. They have an awesome Patreon that's filled with Harry Potter horror cruxes and Star Wars props and things like that. And they have this awesome file. Maybe if this video does really well, they'll do a Nimbus 2001 or a Firebolt or something. Marco, you're seriously the man. As awesome as that broom looks behind me, this project actually kicked my butt. I started working on this in October and it's now April. So what happened was at first I wanted to do the bristles for real. And so here's my first attempt at the broom bristles here. I printed it out and then what I was gonna do was I was gonna use like real bristles, try to, I think it's like corn stalk or something like that that you use bristles for. They were all either too thin, it wasn't gonna actually cover well, so I couldn't figure out what to do with that. And then my next idea was like, oh, maybe I'll use wire and glue wire to it, but at 120 pieces of wire at two feet long, yeah, it was gonna be pretty expensive. And then so I got this like yard line, something that like you mark your yard with if you're doing, I don't know, landscaping or something like that. And again, it's like 120 individual strands. I had to super glue it here, here, down there, and it was just not gonna come out well. So I was like, oh, I guess I'll just try to reprint it on my Neptune 3 Max. I hate that printer, but I was like, I gotta do something different. Marco's files are actually already pre-split into different ways. I end up splitting the bristles just slightly different, and I think I also split the handles different for my specific printer, so you can adjust it to whatever printer you use. So to start the project, I used 3D Gloop to assemble some of these pieces. I end up taking those bristles and splitting it through the thread at the very top of it, and then 3D Gloop that piece together. Splitting it up there made that seem almost invisible right off the start. For the broom handle, I used PVC pipe in between it. I just took the broom handle with me to Lowe's and then figure out what PVC pipe would work. I think it was like a half inch, but just take it with you and you'll be able to figure out what works for you. I then used a soldering iron to clean up some drooping that I had where I didn't support the model as well as I should. It actually printed really easily without the support, but it left a little bit of drooping. So I used a soldering iron to melt some of that. And now it's time to start sanding the project with 80 grit. I sanded the entire broom handle together as one big piece. And then also sanding the bristles is really tough. You have to get into all those grooves and nooks and crannies, but it's really worth it. And that's the first step of the sanding done. Next, I use a glazing spot putty mixed with acetone. You can use Bondo or you can use U-Pull, whatever putty you like to use. I just mix up a 50-50 mix of both of that in a small cup. For the bigger seams in the handle, I use the putty without the acetone to kind of fill in those grooves. And then I use the 50-50 mix of acetone and putty and I brush it along the entire model. This is what it looks like when it's covered in putty. If you're liking the content, like, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube things, it really helps me out. Drop that comment below. What's your favorite Harry Potter prop that you think would be fun to make? With the 120 sanded, it's time to do filler primer. Again, use whatever filler primer you like. Dupacolor, Rust-Oleum, U-Pull, any filler primer is gonna work. I put a good coat of filler primer on the handle and then sprayed the other parts of filler primer as well. They're all getting the same steps. Next, it's time for 220 grit sandpaper. Sometimes I do 220 dry and sometimes I do 220 wet. This time I decided to do dry first. And after that, I did 320 wet sanding and then immediately went into the 400 grit wet sanding as well. And now it's time for paint. Usually I coat everything with a gray primer first to get everything back to the same color before painting. The broom handle got a satin warm caramel color. 
I didn't mention it earlier, but I drilled a small hole at the top that was going to be inserted into the broom, and I hung that through a coat hanger and hung that from my grow tent. All the metal pieces got rust-oleum gold. The foot pegs looked so nice when the gold was going on. All the bristle pieces got a dark espresso color. Then I did a series of dry brushing where I took Walmart acrylics and I got most of the paint off onto a paper towel and then just lightly brushed it over top to kind of bring out the details of the bristles. This faux wood grain here is all thanks to Daryl from Off Earth 3D. I appreciate you so much. They have an awesome tutorial on doing these grips with a faux wood look and they use Copic ink refills that has like a red mahogany, a light walnut, a dark walnut, and you use a chip brush to kind of just go back and forth. You drag it onto there and then you just smear it across and when you layer and layer it, you get this awesome faux wood look and it just, it took this whole project to another level. So Daryl, thank you so much. Go check out his channel, Off Earth 3D for amazing weathering techniques. You can see with just the one color there, you can see that fake wood grain in there. And then when you layer the other two colors on it, it just really gives it so much depth. And then I use Citadel Games Workshop gold paints to paint the lettering on the broom handle. And then also that same paint to paint the thread that goes around the bristles. I got gold hardware from Lowe's. I just again took the pieces with me and then found what bolts would kind of fit with it. And I still end up having to drill out the piece a little bit to make the whole fit. I used super glue and 3D gloop to put all the rings together and assemble the broom finally. And to connect the bristles to the handle, there's a wood dowel inside of it that I wrapped with athletic tape. The wood dowel was close, but I wanted more tension, so I wrapped athletic tape to make it a tighter fit. And boom, the prop is done. It's the best prop I think I've ever made. I'm super proud of this. Thank you so much, Marco, for amazing files and Daryl for techniques that have helped take this thing to a whole nother level. If you made it this far, you're the backbone of the channel. I love you guys so much. You're, you're fantastic and you really help with the watch time. Watch another one after this. The Qui-Gon lightsaber or the Green Ranger helmet tutorial. It really helps out the channel. Thank you guys so much. I love you guys and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.